Hello my soccer universe! Have I ever worn this Iceland jersey on my channel? I don't know, it might be a channel first so that you uh, know we're talking about playoff semi-finals today for the Euro 2024 qualifying. Six teams have been eliminated yesterday, six teams are still in contention, three of them will make it to Germany and one of those is of course Iceland. It actually has been and it is now strictly personal. Been a good day for my collection because of the six teams that are still in contention, five are in my collection, meaning that I might have to get at most one more jersey and I have again all 24. You will see a lot of unpacking videos now in this international break with international teams where you see how I'm filling up uh, these uh, 24 teams. But we're not here about uh, talking about my collection. This is a review video. So let's talk about what happened yesterday in the playoffs. And I actually want to go path by path. We'll start in Georgia and Tbilisi uh, in path C where Georgia played the early game against Lux. Luxembourg, a game that they largely dominated. However, of course, they had one big name missing, Kvitscha Kvartskelia, who was actually banned for this match. So uh, that may, be, may have not been good signs, but they were the better team, especially Sif Sivatze stepped up. I mean, he hit the post early on. He gets the go-ahead goal after a corner that was uh, badly cleared. So uh, it was all Georgia from the get-go. However, the game then seemingly turned early in the second half. Still, there were attacks by Georgia coming. There was a potential penalty, but then on uh, the ensuing attack, suddenly, um, Jelson Rodriguez puts the ball into the net with a rocket, goes by the inside of, of the post. It's 1-1 and Luxembourg is suddenly fully back in the match. Or were they? Because that foul got looked at that just happened before. It never was a penalty, however, it was a clear foul and it resulted in a free kick on the outside of the Luxembourg area. In addition, Chanot got sent off with a red card. The free kick hit, I think it was Schengelia free kick, hit the crossbar, however, then uh, a little bit later, Schengelia who already had the corner the, uh, uh, to the first goal, he then assists Sivatze Sivace very nicely and it's 2-0 Georgia and from there, that moment on, it was only one way that this match is going. So Georgia are through to uh, the finals, which they will host. And who will they pl uh, play against? Well, it will be Greece. Greece had absolutely no trouble uh, disposing of cars. So Kazakhstan, I mean, early on, Bakasetas uh, converts a penalty in the ninth minute, in the 15th, Pelkas, I think it was a headers. Uh, no, no, it was a, 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 a nice... Um, Attacking move makes it 2-0 and Ioannidis and Kurbelis 4-0 uh, at the half. Really, really convincing for Greece. And yes, Kars Kazan might not know, be the strongest opponent, but still, uh, this was an opponent that was well in the uh, qualifying ridden as well. And then late on, Kazakhstan even scored an own goal. It's 5-0. It was the biggest win of the evening. Greece have to now go to Georgia. And, you know, I... Last time Georgia also hosted the playoff final. Uh, they played against North Macedonia. Yes, that's the northern neighbor of Greece. And yeah, between those two, the relations are not also good. Will can Georgia make good or will Greece duplicate what their northern neighbors did? Then let's go over to path B and we'll go to Bosnia. Uh, that was in a way the tightest of all the playoff matches uh, but it was not a great match and while i think that ukraine are the much better team overall i think that bosnia especially for the first 60 minutes or so were the better team i mean there was one situation where um Kolasinac uh, made a run through into the box however he takes the ball away from edin Dzeko, who was in a much better position probably would have put the ball on goal, whereas Kolasinac puts it over goal. And, you know, it was all these uh, mishaps that characterized that game. However, Ukraine really had a hard time being and staying in this game, to, to be honest. And then uh, Amir Dedic from Salzburg uh, takes a shot early in the second half and Matvilenko gives it a bad deflection. It's 1-0 for Bosnia. However, the game then kind of slowed down and got bro uh, brought back to life when suddenly Yaremchuk comes on and he turns the game. Uh, a Konoplia assist he puts in internet in the 85th and then he himself assists Dovpik who heads it in in the 88th minute to completely turn the game on its head. 
Again, I said, Ukraine are probably a better team and they definitely uh, would deserve to be at the Euros. Based on this game, I was not so sure. What made me though happy is that um, in order to seal the deal, they need to bring on a defender. Dov becomes off and who comes on? Lusk's very own Maxim Dalovyarov. So a little bit for him as well, fellow long-haired player. So really happy about that. And Ukraine now can host in Poland, I think Roslov, uh, they will host um, Iceland who went to Budapest, the home ground for Israel, they actually played in the Uipet Stadium and beat Israel 4-1. But that was not a straightforward game at all. First of the 31st minute, Zahavi converts a penalty to give Israel the lead. However, a really brilliant free kick by Gudmundsen in the 39th minute gets the equalizer. Uh, and then after a corner, Gudmundsen assists Rastason. And in the 42nd minute, it's 2-1 Iceland. Iceland then having probably more control of the game, but it really then turned when the Revivo makes a really rough tackle, straight red card in the 73rd minute, uh, and Israel are reduced to 10 men, and still they get a penalty, a hand penalty, so Harvey puts it left and white. And then Gudmundsen scores two more, he's the hero, and Iceland will not take on Ukraine, again on neutral ground, however, I think, I think, that Ukraine, again, is a much better team than Iceland. However, for Iceland, it might have been good news that all of your playoff away games, you have to play a neutral ground, so that levels the playing field a little bit for them. And then we go to path A, where Poland had, of course, no problems with Estonia. Yes, Estonia is a team that can keep it tight, uh, but they didn't help. So, I mean, Frankowski, a really nice move. I mean, it was a good pass by Piotrowski, and Frankowski puts it in for 41 nil. But then Paskozzi is sent off for a second yellow card shortly thereafter. And with 10 men, there was never a chance that Estonia will uh, get past Poland. And, you know, Zalewski was the more or less the star of the show. He assists Ziel Zielinski. He was also the assist for uh, the Mets on goal to make the 4-0 in the, in the middle. Lewandowski uh, assists Piotrowski. And then Szymanski makes it 5-0 again after Zalewski assist. Lewandowski almost... Um, <laughs> Anonymous one would say, Vetkaldo pulls one back, so at least Estonia go out with a goal. And Poland will have now go away, although they're the number one seed one. The draw was not kind to them. They have to go to Wales. I mean, that game went all in Wales' favor from, from, from the get-go when Harry Wilson shot was parried badly. Um, by Radetzky um, and Brooks can pull, 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 pull within. But uh, actually, Finland had a good tactic overall. Keep giving time, they created chances. It's just that Finland kept missing. And Wales on, on, on the other side were all over when it comes to scoring. I mean, uh, Harry, Harry Wilson then assists Nico Williams on a free kick. In, I mean, it was an in the intrigue, and Harry, Harry Wilson was in. It's 2 0. Uh, just before that, Poyan Palo, a really nice plate goal uh, to Puki, makes it 2-1 and you thought this might make it tight. However, Brandon Johnson right after the half, 3-1, uh, looked a little bit offside, but it was a fin laying on the ground. And then very late on, David James uh, just surprises a Finnish uh, defender who was just uh, staring at the ball, takes it off him, runs in, it's 4-1. Uh, Wales deserved it because they were the much more clinical team they were had probably more energy but i think for at least in 45 first 40, 45 minutes the two one was all right but finland were really killed by that first goal in the second half and so we have our th three player finals unfortunately for me because i can at most double screen these uh georgia will host greece in an early slot at six o'clock on tuesday and then ukraine iceland and wales poland i can watch in parallel, I think Wales Poland is a really, really exciting one. It's also this will be the group ge um, group gegner, <laughs> group opponent gegner opponent. Uh, it's a German word. Uh, the group opponent for Austria are there. So uh, a really, really an exciting one. I have have to say I would probably give Wales a slight advantage, but let's see what my model says. 
My model says that yes, Wales have a slight advantage, although Poland have the higher rating, home field advantage swings it in Wales's favor, 55% chance for Wales. Ukraine have a huge advantage over Iceland, 71%. They are the best remaining team in this playoffs. They were the best team in the playoffs of Bornan. So there you go, 71%, 29 for Ukraine. And then while Greece have the higher rating, it's the same situation as with Wales, Georgia with home field advantage. And that is not an insignificant one to to it's a long travel to go to to Bilisi, uh, but it's a tight one. 53, 4, 47 Greece. I would think personally that Greece are overall the more solid uh, team, and Gus Poyet has done a really good job within Greece. Um, however, then there's a Kvitsch Kvarskelia in there that probably will play, and that could actually tilt things in Georgia's favor. However, if Greece can keep it tight at the, at the back, I would favor them going on and because we had some internationals played already and we have the playoffs let's see some changes in the overall favorites for the euros i mean the top four remain unchanged and it's probably fair to say the winner comes among those top four although never discount the host but the host loses a spot to belgium uh then there are a whole lot of changes on the, on the bottom ukraine made a big move up because now of course their chances of qualifying improved significantly that was it for me from the qualifying playoffs. I'm looking forward to these finals. I have not watched any friendly games and I'm not planning to really do. Maybe I'll watch a little bit of Austria if I can see one of the bigger ones. You know, uh, we have Germany and France. We have uh, England and Brazil, Spain, Brazil. If it happens and I have half the time, I may do it, but I actually want to concentrate on other things. I, for you, I have quite a few unpacking videos and I will, of course, comment now on all the released national team jerseys already because we saw a whole lot more than, I have, than what I've talked previously. There has been a pretty big jersey announcement yesterday as well that we have to mention too. Wait, uh, expect such a video on Sunday. In any case, please let me know who you think will make it to the Euros, uh, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you soon with about more things about my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!